Well, I've been doing some investigation and unemployment is way higher than what's being reported. We're gonna talk about that and a lot more in this episode of Hustlers Kung Fu. This video was brought to you by HustlersKungFuLifeSkills.com where we teach you how to manage money, how to start a business, and a whole lot more. Be sure to go to HustlersKungFuLifeSkills.com or check below the video for our best special. I was doing some research and I was looking, all of the states, mortgage, all of the states, Department of Labor websites are crashing. There are many reports of many people who are trying to apply for unemployment insurance and they can't. So the 6.6 .6 million per week of unemployment claims is the max that the system can handle. And I want you to think about that. The system is at massive max capacity. That means that we have way more people unemployed. We could literally be sitting at 20, 25% unemployment right now. And there, there are still people, YouTubers who are talking about the government stimulus package is not gonna let us slide into a recession. Make no mistake about it. We're in a recession right now. Like, I mean, we're even in an official recession because when the numbers come out, they're gonna be ugly. And what does this mean? Right now, I, I feel that this is gonna happen in the next four weeks. I feel that people are going to be going back to work. <clears throat> they're gonna be wearing masks. They're gonna be practicing social distancing because the economic pain that is happening is cataclysmic. Right now, the state of Texas, which wasn't supposed to be closed, um, is going to reopen their economy next week. And the state of Texas was really interesting, and I'm going to be watching this. Texas ha is the on the potential of becoming an epicenter. And if they do what I feel they're going to do, I feel the infection rate's going to spike. And this is where many people are. They're like, let the old people die. You know, it's just the flu. And, and I feel that there are many, many bad things going to happen. I feel that Texas is going to reopen, the infection rate is going to spike, and then they're going to have to shut down again. That's what I foresee happening. And it's going to be really, really crazy because I want to talk to you guys about morality. There are people, Emmett Krill, who said, you know, because you have morals, that makes you weak. I got a question. Why aren't you richer than I am? I'm being quiet for a minute because there are many people who say that there's no place for morals, that, you know, do what you got to do. I'm going to give an argument to you that having morals and strength will make you stronger and will enable you to. Because here's the thing, because with morals and principles comes a certain thing as discipline. And I guarantee you, all of these folks who are on that video talking about well, morals are outdated. We need to hustle. We need to get the bag. And how come all y'all are poor? How come all of y'all are poor? How come y'all have all, all the time, it comes down to you got to do whatever you got to do to get the bag. Why are you in that situation since having no morals puts you at a disadvantage? Having morals, principles, and a philosophy for your life makes you inherently stronger. And to everyone who has something to say about that video, how come you ain't richer than me? How come you don't live better than me? How come your house ain't bigger than mine? How come your cars aren't better than mine? Seriously, how come if that's the way? One of the things I'm trying to do is to give you guys established time-tested principles that have been making people wealthy for centuries. And this whole notion of doing anything you need to do to secure the bag is not one of them. Right now, strippers are on OnlyFans. They're, they're doing cam stuff because they're suffering. I make more money than strippers. I make way more money than strippers. Doing it the right thing. I don't have to take my clothes off. I don't have to shake my titties in somebody's face to get some dollars. One of the things you guys have got to understand and this is one of the reasons that the unemployment rate is skyrocketing uh, due to the bug, but due to value. You are paid according to how easy it is to replace you. If it's very easy to replace you, Uber, 
gig workers, Instacart, you're not going to make a lot of money because you're not bringing a lot of value to the table. You're not doing what you need to do to increase value to the world. And this unemployment, and also there are many people with this felonious, idealistic thing that the economy is going to snap back. That once we get this thing under control, that we're instantly going to go back to where we were. And these folks don't know about economic theory. They don't know about economic fundamentals. They don't know. Because essentially, what's this thing is, this is a global reset. And what it's going to do is reset many businesses to ground zero. These businesses are going to have to do, do a startup all over again. They're going to be closed. They're going to have employees who are going to quit. They're going to have employees who are going to move on. They're not going to have the money to start up. This is a global reset. And right now, if there was a magical cure to fix this, we're looking at about a year to come out of this from where we are right now. And going back to, I believe unemployment is at 20% right now, based upon the economic data of that there are literally thousands of people who cannot file. This one lady, she did a report. She was like, I wake up at 6 a.m. I call, I can't get through. So we have a lot of people who are unable to file for unemployment, but they're eligible for unemployment. And this brings up another specter. The stimulus package, in, you know, th this is wild. If you're part of the lower economic caste, you're gonna make more money with unemployment than you were working the job. With this $600 plus most states is 250 to 300 a week. So you're gonna be making close to a G a week. That's $4,000 a month. That's gonna be more money than you were making working. If you're a part of the lower economic. And that's fantastical because in my video, the looting will be epic. You're gonna like, people are gonna start crunching the mouth. It's like, I made more money going on unemployment. You got folks who, who have a job, you have nurses right now who are quitting. Right now, uh, this idiot put this thing on Facebook that they're laying off doctors and nurses. <sighs> I mean, I understand some people want attention, but they're not laying off doctors and nurses. If you are a nurse or a doctor, they're actually graduating doctors from med school early to participate in this thing. So they're not laying off doctors and nurses. That's just an idiot who wants some attention on Facebook. But right now, nurses can make 100 to 125 bucks an hour. And there are many nurses who are refusing that money because they're concerned about their health. So what you're going to see is in some of these essential work people, you'll see some of these people who are going to quit and go on unemployment because they're going to make more money being on unemployment for six months. And this is going to be a resetting of social work. So many things are gonna be reset because one of the big issues that we have as a country is that people have gotten away from morals, philosophy, intellectual rigor, and intellectual pursuit. And once again, to all you folks who were like saying, hey, I'm at a better advantage because I will do whatever I need to do. And let, let's talk about that. Let's talk about the environment that creates a situation where you have to do whatever you have to do. If you are like that, you have not been listening to the lessons and the things I've been giving you guys for years. Because first thing you do, well, the first thing you do is you get your time back. This is why you create a business that pays you enough money so you can buy your time back. Then the second thing you do is you create an environment where you can win. See, these principles that I have are more than just morals and doing the right thing. It's a way of living. It's a way of having, constructing my life. It's based upon Asian, West, Eastern philosophy. It is very, very powerful. This is why I've been able to win so long because the, the, having morals and principles takes a lot of strength because in the beginning, when I was in that boarding house, 
I had to start acting a different way. And I had to start thinking a different way, which in that environment of the West End, where there was a bunch of people who would do whatever they had to do to get whatever they needed, it was hard because I was like, why am I walking around having these principles and these morals when no one, are, no one in my environment is? And I persisted. And when I entered into a new environment, when I was able to create my own environment, that's when I started to blossom. Because here's one of the reasons, and this is gonna mess up a lot of people who lost their jobs, because you have no discipline whatsoever, none. You're going to screw yourself. And because I went through that period where I saw people doing all kinds of stuff, there was drug addicts living in the house, there was prostitutes, there were people wilding out, doing whatever they needed to do to get by. And I did not participate because I chose to have a moral principle stance and those principles enabled me to get rich. So for all of you folks out there who talk about morals are outdated, principles are outdated, look at the environment in which you're operating in. Look at what you're doing. If you don't have no money, if you're going to be caught up in this pandemic, if you're going to be caught up in this recession and you don't have any morals, principles, I think you need to check the way that you're living. Because morals, ethics, and principles make you stronger. They don't make you weaker. And anyone who says that's, that they make you weaker, I would like to look at your financial statement. Because you're talking about, hey, I'll do whatever I need to do. And that gives me an advantage in this evolutionary process. But you don't have no money. You have no assets. You have nothing. So where is that supposedly superior advantage making your life better on a daily basis? By having morals and having the ability to tell the truth and live in truth. There are many people who run from the truth. There are many people who are right now talking about this is just a flu. Right now, this thing has killed 18,000 people in a matter of weeks. The flu the season, which started in September, has killed 18,000 people. From September, October, November, December, January, February, March, and April. And this thing has killed 18,000 people in less than a month. It ain't the flu. But this is stuff you tell yourself because you want what you want because you have no discipline. You have no principles. You, you want to do what you want to do. And this is part of the reason, and I'm going to go talk to my men. This is part of the reason most of you men don't have the lives you want because you have no principles. Because going to the disruptive male mandates, number one, get your economics together. Number two, get your body together. Number three, get your mental together. Number four, date submissive women. Because you have no principles, you have no discipline, your life is a dumpster fire. It's other chaos. Because one of the big issues is the people who were already struggling before this thing happened. You think they were struggling before? Now life is past desperate. There was this food bank in San Antonio, Texas, which usually serves 200 to 400 people. They were putting on an event and they expected 6,000 people. 10,000 people showed up. 10,000 people showed up. And the workers working the food bank stayed an extra four hours to make sure everyone was served. And now they're petitioning the state of Texas for $12 million. More people than you know are suffering. More people are struggling. More people have this thing. And I guarantee you, once the data, because to see there is a lag time between real time and when the real data comes out, and the data's coming out, I think that we're at 20% unemployment right now, which means that the financial monkey double backflips that the stock market is doing are fictional. It's propped up by the Fed. And we're gonna run into a liquidity crisis because how much money can the Fed keep spending to keep propping this up? At some point, real marketplace fundamentals are gonna come on the table. 
And this is when you're going to see other chaos. This is when you're going to see because this so-called strong American Trump economy literally a few weeks we're about to destroy it. And we're, we're this is April 10th. We've got you know three more weeks in the month to go and we're going to see what happens because understand I want you guys to look at the unemployment numbers because they're going to keep going up. And this is why uh, like many states are going to try to open up their economy, get things rolling. You know, people are going to be walking around in face masks, social distancing. That's what they're going to do because they have to do it. Now, for me, it's a hard, hard decision because I know what's going to happen. They, once they open up the economy and people start mingling and doing what they normally do, the infection rate's going to skyrocket. And we're going to overwhelm our hospital systems. But we will see how this goes because so far, state of Texas is the only one that's put that out there. And I've been doing some research on Texas. The energy sector has been deeply impacted by this oil fight between Saudi Arabia and Russia. A lot of energy people have been laid off. There is a recession in Texas. I know there's someone that's telling you there's no recession in Texas. There is a recession in Texas because there is a global depression around the world. Literally 80% of the people in the world are sitting at home chilling other than the folks who are in these third world countries. I mean, just to think that, you know, I know many people in the GOP feel that their mindset will defy the laws of gravity and principle. But in Texas, 10,000 people showed up for a food bank. 10,000. And they were only expecting 6,000. This should tell you how bad things are. Not how bad things are going to get, how bad things are. And they're going to get worse. And this is one of the things that people don't want to hear because I get new people coming to the channel and it's like, hey, anyone that has any social influence, you should be talking about solutions. And I have been talking about solutions for the last 10 years. And many people have not been listening. So if you're new and you've just now receiving the message, all right, I understand that. You didn't know about me. You didn't know about this message. But if you've been here a minute, I don't want to hear that because I've been telling you guys what you needed to do. I've been pushing, prodding, mocking, making jokes, talking trash because I know what it's like to live in a state of lack. I know where it's like to have no money in your wallet. I know what it's like to have no one you can call to bail you out. And this is one of the things that's going to happen because if you go to OnlyFans, the Sugar Baby websites, all of these sites are lighting up because people don't have a sense of proportion. And what I mean is that a lot of these godless young women feel that they're going to go OnlyFans, they're going to go to the Sugar Baby website. There were, there were not enough sugar daddies before this happened. Before this happened, because I've been doing research on it and a lot of these chicks have been on these websites a year or two and they've not found a sugar daddy because the supply outstrips the sugar daddy population. There's only certain ex uh, there's only a certain kind of guys who have excess cash flow where they can support someone. And then also some of these chicks, they think that their coach Greg Adams peace leave is worth so much that they're gonna sit on it and they're just like, well, you know, it's so hard for me to find a sugar daddy. Ah, uh, yeah, you know, cause there, there's no one that's gonna give you $3,000 to see you once a week. Even if the dude has it, he ain't gonna do it because he can get someone for a thousand bucks a month and get more access than you with your elegant peace leave and one of the things that's going to happen is reality is going to start seeping in. It's kind of like I was watching this PBS special and this female prison guard was saying that women come to jail. They, they, they don't understand that it's real. They, they, it literally takes them a few weeks to actually accept that the fact that they're in jail, they're not gonna get out, no one's coming to save them. It literally takes a few weeks because they come in, they're like, well, I'm gonna get an appeal, I'm getting out, and then one day they're in that cell and it dawns upon them that they're in jail. And this is, because so for, for so long, women have not had to be accountable 
And right now, this recession is going to make a lot of women be very, very accountable because the reality is going to filter in and it's going to be a hard, hard reckoning because there are so many women who live in this state of suspended disbelief of reality. It's just the craziest thing. And a lot of women are going to suffer in this recession. A lot of women because the men are suffering and the men have the money. And as we see broad swaths of people go unemployed during this thing, and even once they start opening up the states, the unemployment is still going to go up because there are going to be many company owners who are like looking at the numbers, listening to the doctors, and they're not going to open up regardless of what the state says. And you're going to have some of these GOP knuckleheads who are going to bull for it. And it's just going to be carnage and chaos. It just is because I want you to fathom that we have 20% unemployment, which is twice what it was during the great recession in a matter of weeks. And we have companies that are shutting down and we have companies that are losing trillions of dollars. The economy is losing trillions of dollars and this money is gone. It's lost. It's never going to be able to be remade up. And one of the big things is that people are going to come to some different, I, I, I expect a lot of people are going to turn to religion. One of the things that many of the governments are doing, because this religion is such a powerful force in the lives of people, is that many places are refusing to extend the no gathering rules to churches. So in church tomorrow, there's going to be a bunch of people who are going to be in church tomorrow and expect a spike in the infection rate a week or two after. Just expect it. Because the human condition is rooted in stubbornness and I want to do what I want to do. I don't want to, you know, I want to do what I want to do. And it's going to be a costly mindset. Because going back to principles, I, I'm going to tell you guys a story. I was in a situation where I had a certain unique set of skills. I knew how to do white collar crime. And I actually did a little bit of it and then I stopped because I didn't want to go to jail. And I was in a situation where I knew I had this unique set of skills and I knew how to do this thing and I didn't do it and I went hungry. And that was one of the hardest periods of my life because, you know, doing the scam stuff was really, really easy. But I was like, I'm not going to keep doing this because I'm going to get caught and I'm going to jail. And I, I'm not built for jail. I'm just not built for jail. So I stopped it and I've never done it again. And one of the things that happened was I had a night where I had no money. I was hungry and I had a reckoning that night because my stomach, you know, when you get really hungry, your stomach makes noises. It starts talking to you. It's like, hey. I need some food in here. And I had this reckoning. And then I sat on the floor and I meditated because meditation actually helps with so many things. And this helped me get through that moment. And then the next day, I got a better job. I got some money in my pocket. And I, I weathered that storm because this is the thing about character. Character is the things you do when nobody's looking. You know, when you do it and everyone's looking, you do the right thing, that's, that's fine. That's easier to do because you have influence. But when no one's looking and it's just you by yourself, that's when you find out who you were. And I actually was really proud of myself to not resort to the scamming because I only did it one time. And I would have been a, a great scammer. I would have been a great scammer. But this is one of the things that happened to me because I, I saw myself descending into an abyss of chaos. Because the first time I did the scamming, that, that's how I got the computer. I may do a story time on how that all went because it was so easy. It was incredibly easy. And I even had a conversation with myself. If I was going to do something illegal, it was going to be white collar crime because the penalty was so much less than selling drugs or doing some stuff like that. But I did it once and I never did it again because... 
I didn't want to turn that into a habit. I didn't want to turn that into who I was. Because one of the things that happens when you pick an occupation, it becomes hard for you to do something else. It becomes hard for you to create new revenue streams because it becomes a habit. And I didn't want that to become a habit. But these principles and this character and doing the right thing and having ethics has served me extremely well. And once again, for everyone who says that, you know, you don't need ethics and stuff, how much money do you have in the bank? What is your, I'm going to do whatever I have to do attitude. How has that served you well? Because here's one of the problems with that attitude. And I see it with all of these sugar babies. When you don't govern yourself and live your, a good life and a correct life, you find yourself consistently getting into these crises. And this is another part of having principles because if you live your life a certain way, you're just not gonna run into crisis. Last year, I had a heart attack and a stroke. I had a personal crisis, but I didn't have a financial crisis. I did not lose my house. I did not lose my cars. I did not become laid on my credit cards. I didn't, none of that stuff happened because of these principles, because I had stuff in play before the crisis. And this is one of the things I keep telling you guys, and I keep trying to hammer it home, that when it's, the sun is shining, this is when you need to stack up, and this is when you need to stash your things. And a lot of people are not listening because they feel that they can always put it on a credit card or get a loan or someone's gonna bail them out. And what many people are gonna find out during this crisis is no one's coming. There is no Superman. There is no Spider-Man. There is nothing, there is no one that's coming to save you and you're gonna to have to suffer. And that's going to be a very hard thing for many people to deal with. Because when you have character and ethics, you build inner resolve and you build inner strength. And I am really tougher than many of you with these attitudes, I gotta do whatever I need to do. Because if you had discipline and true mental toughness, you would have created an environment where you would not have these crises, where you would have to do whatever you have to do to get whatever you need. It would not keep coming. It would not, crisis knocking on your door. It's almost you could set your watch to every time you're gonna have a crisis because you have no personal discipline. You have no good habits. This is why you got to do whatever you got to do to get what you need because you don't have any discipline. You have none. And it shows. Because everyone that's left comments on that video, I'm checking you. I was like, okay, how come you're not richer than me? Let's get to the real. How come you don't have millions of dollars in the bank? Let's get to the real. Let's talk about that. Because this whole, I will do whatever I need to do to get things going, it is flimsy and it is false. By having a life of principle, discipline, and doctrines and a system in order to live your life, because I'm going to put this section in the critical thinking course, that's what's going to deliver you from the madness of the chaotic world. This is what's going to create peace. This is what's going to create a sanctuary for you to thrive and grow in. Not this whole, I don't have no ethics. If, I'm, if I got to push my grandma off the subway thing, grandma gone. That, that's, that's a poor society. And that's what happened to Rome. When Rome descended into self-seeking behavior and people got away from ethics, the society collapsed. So... Do you want your personal economy to collapse? Keep doing that. If you want to build a strong personal economy, start practicing ethics, start practicing principles, and start serving your fellow man. All right, that's all I got for you. There should be a video right here. Be able to watch it, and I will see you guys in the next.